God, and I like the, the brother spoke this morning at Sunday school, and he said that it's that, that you gotta have a prayer life. Gotta have a prayer life. And you need to have a prayer life. And, and I and um, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to get myself right because I'm you know, but, uh, she kind of messed me up. She did a real good job. <laughs> but I'm gonna get back to my notes. So. Um, I understand that I'm the preacher of the hour, not necessarily the preacher of four hours. <laughs> like I said, we honor God today, and I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Hallelujah. under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As, as the brother said, I, my name is, is, is uh, I, I got a lot of names, but y'all call me Tyrone. That was my family called me. My brother, my sister. Wherever she went, she didn't get somewhere. <laughs> they called me Jay. Right. My last name, because when, when, when you're a cop, you don't have a first name. You just got your, 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 your Jay, Kevin, your Jack. That's what we called them back in the day. <laughs> and so just, you know, just call me. You can even call me a child of God. So, uh, I'm Tyrone. See me walking around for me. Tyrone called me James. I'm good. Uh, the, the titles, all the Degrees, going to school, all that, all of that is good, right. and it's and it's worthy of, of of being spoken of. Right. But at the end of the day, anything you do right. in the world only enhances who you are. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you're about getting educated, understand that that education only makes you better, a better who you were. So if you were a bad person, mm -hmm. then you're gonna be an educated bad person. Yeah, <laughs> it was kind of like. Like I said this morning, putting lipsticks on lipstick on the pig. You just got pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Good so I, I got a couple of degrees. I went to a couple of schools. I'm with you. I married to my lovely wife, Sonoli. Amen. We've been married about 22, 23 years. Amen. Amen. I got my daughters in the house singing a song. My son, Ink is right there. My son. Um, my brother, the minister, Reginald Marquis James. Um, it's in the house. I appreciate you coming. I have a couple of people that, you know, we play peanut. You know, and a lot of people don't know what peanut is. And I understand that. I understand that. But you play spades. You know. yeah. If we black, you play spades. Well, spades is kind of like elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> elementary school, maybe, maybe, maybe junior high school. Thank you, Mom. Right? Then you got Bidwiss. Bidwiss is, let's say, tag level high school. Know, college 101, if you love college. But then you get to the big boys or the peanut potato. Peanut was graduate school. <laughs> peanut was graduate school. Peanut and if you play bridge, fine, that's cool. Peanut and bridge, they, you know, they're competitors of the same. same so I got a couple of my peanut players, please, please. Um, this is the Rock Falls of Hardy and my friend in the back then, Grand Day. Amen. Amen. All my adult life, Amen. when I tell you that they that they did my soul good when I when they walked in, yeah, they did. I, I wanted to make sure I, I got that. I have um, several members of my family um, came with me today. Um, I'm gonna get to you in a second, Gloria. But I got my aunt Merck from Merck on mother side. I have my cousin Cynthia. Her, her grandbaby, I guess they had to step out. Um, and and um, mm. of course I have my adopted daughter, Sequoia, in the back right there, wherever we go, she's right there with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to um, take a moment to, to, because, you know, we don't often get an opportunity to tell people how much we truly love. Amen. We don't get an opportunity. It, for some reason, it never comes up. Um, we want to say thank you for just being in your life. You know what I mean? Um, we coming uh, this time last last week. I was coming back, and my brother was coming back from South Carolina because my aunt had passed away. Now she had been sick for a couple of years, and, and while her her passing um, was somewhat expected, it was still hard. You know, you still wish you had some things you wanted to say when it passed. Um, and my other brother would have been here, um, you remember him from the last time we was here, Eric, um, he's like my Aaron, whatever I go, Eric is right there with me. Um, but he's not here today because 
his brother-in-law passed away suddenly um, last Thursday. Last Thursday, he passed away suddenly. He sat down in a chair and, and didn't get up. He was, 40, he was 36 years old. 36 years old. And, um, and that, you know, it gives you pause. You have to take time to, to really sit back. And this person, I don't know if I've ever, um, I know I haven't done it in a situation like this. And I wanted to let her know that um, how special you are to me, Gloria. Uh, my cousin Gloria came to live with us when I was, I guess I was four years old. She was 14 or whatever. And um, we didn't, and, and we were a house of men. We had men and I. There were three boys, my father, um, and my mother. My mother had that, had the, she had to beat us like that. Like, like she had to <laughs> Let me tell you, we were rough in the house. And um, Gloria was like a sister. Not like a sister, she is our sister. My, my, my brother here will, will, will confirm my testimony that we, um, that she was pretty much raised. She, she cooked for us. She, when my parents, before, now, my, now before we, before my mother and father went to church, um, when she got her license, she drug us to church up on, up in Northeast, up there by Breezes Nightclub. Um, we was up there, and, and when I say they were a Holy Rollers church, I'm going to talk about Holy Rollers in a second, in a second but they, they churched up there. And, 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 and we were, might have been the only young people there, but we went there every Sunday. We stayed for the service, and she brought us back home. She cooked for us, she babysat for us. She was... And, and I want, she, she was the example that we followed into adulthood. The, the example we followed into adulthood. She, hers was the first wedding we went to that was nice. <laughs> so, so after that, <laughs> you know, like, you know, you knew the lights went on. I'm saying, it was catered, people had tuxedos, and I mean, it was, it was the first went to, went to that was nice and we had a reception. The reception was at the classes, remember? Wow. That was, that was the classes, back when the classes were something. <laughs> uh, she was the first one to go to college. And we were like, well now I, I guess going to college. But she was the first one to go to college when it, when it was just a big deal to graduate high school. Now, because of the example, the forerunner that she said, going to college, it's not a question of whether or not you are or you aren't going to college. You know in the sixth grade that you're going to college. Amen. Right? And um, I just want you to know that thank you. And I love you dearly. Amen. 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 Um, I'm sorry. I got, got a little bit. Um, my pastor, Alvin David Benson, over true deliverance, sends his love and prayers. Sends his love and prayers. In fact, we are looking forward to the Reverend Dr. Kevin Jackson. He's talking about my degrees. The Reverend Dr. <laughs> Kevin Jackson is going to come and, 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 and bless us at our Mary Couples Retreat in October. In October. Um, according to the scripture, we'll get back into the word, and I'm going to get back to my notes. According to the scripture, we find our heroes, Paul and Silas. Remember Batman and Bible? He said, our heroes are in some, some type of dire straits. Those of us now, if you know what I'm talking about, then you are old. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> we find our heroes, Paul and Silas. Um, they were beaten. They were stripped of their clothes, and they were thrown not just into jail. The scripture says they were thrown into the inner jail, solitary confinement. The, the jailer was given special instructions according to the scripture. Now, this ain't me saying it. The scripture said the jailer was given special instructions to keep them safe. In other words, don't let them out, right? The jailer, having received his, his marching orders, said, you know what? Let me put them in stocks, shackles, chain them to the wall. Now, they weren't just in jail. 
they weren't just in solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. They were in the inner jail. Yeah. So the question is why? Now normally, normally, we get to this part, we just go straight into the speaking, but, but this is an inquisitive part. I, you know, I know y'all, I know, I know, I know my wife. She's gonna ask me, well how did they get, the, why did they just beat them up and throw them in jail? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you gotta give me all of that, because I don't, because, you know, so what we're gonna do, we're try to put their circumstance in context, okay. right? It says, according to the, uh, says, um, they were thrown in jail mm -hmm. because they were about God's business, well, mm -hmm. right? Um, the Bible says, the Bible says that all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Mm -hmm. That's 2 Timothy 3 and 12. So if you live a godly life, you're going to be persecuted. Amen. Mm -hmm. That was part of the Sunday school lesson. Today. He, did a, he did, a, did a good job. Praise the Lord. He did a good job. Good job. We live that even today. How many people call names for the Lord Church? Yeah. Name them. Preacher's Kid, mm -hmm. Church Bam, uh, <laughs> Goody Two Shoes. Holy Roller. Yeah. Jerry Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Swaggart. Yeah. And, and, and. That's Eddie. They used to talk about his bag when we was a kid. You know, so go to my grandma's house. You know, my grandma, they were in the church. They were, it was churched out. They had a TV that didn't work. It was a floor model that was furniture and didn't care. <laughs> TV didn't work. He said, no, nah, you used to hate going to grandma's house. <laughs> no, 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 nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> right? And they talked about us. They talked about us. We've been singled out because of our faith. Kept away from certain family events because we make people uncomfortable. They can't drink like they want to drink. Can't smoke the little smoky smoke. They can't curse like they want to curse. Or the complete opposite. We get invited to certain events in an effort to entice us to conduct ourselves in a manner contradictory to our godly beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know people that, come on man, God don't care. Smoke this and mm -hmm. pray about it later. Ask for forgiveness. Right. Jesus Christ is the great redeemer. Right? Mm -hmm. right? We have been around people, even close ones, close loved ones, who always put the church in issues regarding our belief system in a negative light. People talk bad about the church. We've seen news stories from around the world, especially in Africa and Western Asia and the mm -hmm. Middle East, mm -hmm. where Christians were being killed because they're Christians. Mm -hmm. Last year in Somalia and, and Kenya, they had several attacks on Christians Amen. and churches. And mm -hmm. the guy walked up to him yes. and said, do you believe in Jesus Christ? The man said yes and got shot in the head. Mm -hmm. Well, the next one, you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. Got shot in the head. Mm -hmm. right? we, we hear all the time about how the Jews and the, and the Arabs are, are going at it over, over there in Israel and then over there in Gollum Heights and all that stuff. But people caught in the middle of that battle are the Christians. Well, yeah. They're the Christians. They're catching them from both sides and they don't have a land. They don't have a land. It's either Jew or Arab. So we get what we can get. So we get persecuted because we're Christians. Paul and Silas were being persecuted because they were Christians. In this situation, Paul and Silas were doing God's work. He and Silas was preaching in the street to a crowd of people as they were being followed by a certain woman. Acts 16 and 16 describes the woman as a damsel possessed with the spirit of divination. The spirit of divination. In other words, she was a fortune teller. She was a palm reader. She performed parlor tricks in the crowd that was gathered to, 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 to hear Paul and Silas speak. She performed as parlor tricks for money. Mm -hmm. And she was gaining money and, 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 and cash for her masters. In other words, she was, she was being pimped out. Mm -hmm. She was being pimped out. All right. All right. She was doing parlor tricks, she was getting money, she was being pimped out. And according to the scripture, she followed Paul and Silas for many days. Well, yeah. For mm -hmm. many days, and in the 19th verse, Paul finally said, you know what, enough. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Well, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of you coming behind me <laughs> and doing this, this stuff. You distracted me mm -hmm. from, the, from doing God's work. Mm -hmm. So Paul, being Paul.